what's happening everybody welcome back to the JR Wisdom channel thanks again for tuning in to my channel new and old subscribers for those of you tuned in for the first time make sure y'all click the subscribe button along with the bell that way you receive notifications for all the videos I post and make sure y'all check out my other videos hopefully y'all find something that you like on there so without further ado I'm going to get into uh, this topic of basically college degrees and those who pursue college degrees that really has a uh, lackluster future, so to speak. And basically, not much of a return on investment. And when, I, when I'm getting that on the return on investment, I'm basically talking about the whole, the whole issue of when... And it's not just, it's not just women like I have in the title. I'm I'm discussing the biggest part of the college conspiracy which is within the education system that has placed a lot of students men, men and women in bondage with this debt that you will carry for, you know, pretty much for a great chunk of uh the rest of your adult life if you don't find a way to pay off this debt. It's like almost like having a mortgage. And things like that. And I, I thought of this topic is based off of uh, a live chat that O'Shea did with uh, Aaron Clary. I believe that's his name. And he spoke about this. And it was something that I've been meaning to talk about. Because I'm uh, in, in the credit arena. In the credit engineering arena. And I see a lot of this on um, people's credit reports. More so on uh, female uh, women's credit reports. Where I see... A huge amount of debt in the student loan area but I'll get into that later on in this video so back to this part um, for those of you who may have been down that path of getting federal student loans student loans what have you um, you are kind of forced in that that area that space to take upon these loans just to uh, whether you're don't, don't whether you weren't able to procure some type of funds to go to college or you weren't able to get a scholarship or a grant to cover your tuition and you aren't of the the wealthier percentage of this country so you're forced to take out these loans and this and I and I call it a, a conspiracy because these loans are insured by the federal government and the thing is no matter what you cannot default, I mean, you can default on these loans, but the government will find a way, as long as you have a job, as long as you have a stream of income, uh, as long as you file taxes, they will find a way to garnish your wages. And you can be as broke as you want, try to file for bankruptcy, that will not discharge these loans. So, as pretty as it may look, as... You know, all the titles you may have, you may you may be a doctor, you may have your master's, you may have, you know, PhD, whatever have you, all these different degrees. And at the end of the day, you may be hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and underemployed and underpaid because you're not able to get a job that will generate enough income to actually pay, pay off these loans in a timely fashion. So... It's true also, I'm not so much, I'm, I'm focusing on women in this, but um, it's also men who get into bad majors as well, or pursue degrees that really, you know, aren't really practical, so to speak, or, or, or don't really generate income. I mean, it's cool, it's cool to follow your passion, I'm not telling anybody not to follow follow your passion. But what's the use of following your passion if you're racking up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and you don't really have a way to pay off this debt? The goal is if you're going to rack up that, uh, uh, that, that much debt, you should be able to pay it off with some type of job. So um, I, I'm, I'm talking about women because most a lot of times men uh, are... Uh, you have men in business just like you have women in business, but you have a lot of a lot of men who are blue collared and who work these jobs as uh, plumbers, welders. Not saying that women don't, but you have a lot more men doing blue collar work than women. 
you have a, a huge portion of, of women who aren't homemakers that are educated. And it's also statistics show that uh, the black woman is uh, more is the most educated person in the United States. But we also have to look at the fact that even though we have black women have these degrees, you, you there's also a small percentage of you, which I believe it's like eight percent, that work in the private sector, and uh, even smaller percent, which is two percent, which is in leadership. Now, some black women will say that's because of the nature of them being black. Or it might be a racial thing. That could be true. But you have to look at a lot of these degrees that... Uh, and it's not, like I said, it's not just black women, but that's what I'm talking about in this per se. Uh, because I am within the African American diaspora. And the fact that black women are the most educated, which is uh, always, which is constantly talked about is that a lot of the the fields that are pursued are really degrees that really don't make that much money and the return on investment on when I say return on investment the amount that you spend to get this degree you're paying for this virtually for the for the rest of your life I've I've looked at credit portfolios for women that are in their late 40s and they still have 130 140 thousand dollars worth of debt same thing with a and uh the majority of women who come to me to get their uh their credit you know situated you know have student loans and a lot of these student loans are in the uh upper hundred thousand or close to a hundred thousand and a lot of these women are in their early thirties mid thirties that have this massive amount of debt. Yet still, they're working in jobs where they're only making maybe twelve or thirteen dollars an hour, and you add in to the fact there's a, some of them may have maybe single mothers or have children, and they're providing for a household while trying to pay off these student loans, which these people these uh, collector not debt collectors but the government is relentless as far as they're going to get their money, and like I said, bankruptcy won't discharge these things. So a lot of these fields, and I'm like I said, I'm not here to tell you what you should and shouldn't go into, but you know, statistically, most of these fields that are being going into, I mean, that are being majored in, and you know, whether you're getting your bachelor's, master's, you know, whatever, so on and so forth, is stuff like communications, you know, liberal arts. That that can mean a lot of the education fields, you know, with the liberal arts, sciences, uh, maths, English, stuff like that. Psychology, that's another one. Uh, theatrical arts or theater arts, fashion design, sociology, criminal justice, fine arts, you know, stuff like that. Uh, hospital and hospitality and tourism. You know, you got stuff, not to say it's degrees in that, but like basket weaving. And things like that. You know, all these degrees that really you you could spend, you're spending all this money on, which you basically, these are years of your life that you're trying to pay this back. And you're not, a lot of times you're not guaranteed a job, even if you're with a sorority or whatever. You're not guaranteed a job that will, like I said, generates a good return on investment. And, uh... You know, you end up underpaid or underemployed or unemployed at that point. And I believe Aaron Clary, you know, he was saying a lot of times, which we do see, a lot of these people or women end up being barristers at Starbucks or working at Office, office Max, Office Depot, things of this nature, being underemployed, you know, um hotels and stuff like that even though they have these degrees but they just because they're it's it's that difficult sometimes to get a job or get a job in that field or get a job in that field that generates that that type of income so you just imagine you're spending a lot of time some of these some of these universities 15 to 30k a year on education yeah you have that you got that whole prestigious you know, um, act where you walk across the stage 
and you have that diploma and you're in your cap and gown, but then what? Having that degree isn't going to guarantee you a job. Having a degree doesn't equal intelligence, doesn't equal drive at the end of the day. You know, and he had a lot of points home. It, just because you're able to sit, and I don't, I'm not taking education from anyone, but this doesn't guarantee you, you know, that drive or that that opportunity as far as business. A lot of times these things in life is who you know, as everyone knows, you know. And all you're getting, like I said, <laughs> is a lifetime of debt for that return on investment. It's just like, for an investment like that, you know, a lot of times people on something as small as a few dollars from from a, a store, Walmart, you're willing to return it because you didn't get your money's worth, but we never see that when it comes to college. Yes, though, they're constantly ripping these people off, as opposed to other countries who do provide free education. For a lot of for a lot of citizens, the United States doesn't see it as much like that, you know. We get free public schooling, but independent secular education, you know, that you pursue on your own, you just got to look at. We I think we need to be more educated on the the larger scale of things as far as this concept of bondage with debt and slavery so to speak, a form of slavery with this, this debt, trying to pay it off because it's not going anywhere. That's the type of loan you can't, even if you default on it, they still will take your money. And that's what you need to realize and make that wise decision and choices on what it is that you should major in that's going to be profitable for you at the end of the day, you know, and marketable where you'll be able to market yourself afterwards, you know. Um, the reality hits people, though, when they uh, they were living off their student loans in college. You know, they were using it to buy, you know, use beat, beat up cars or, you know, hoop D's, purses, you know, just partying or just buying food or paying for their rent. And they racked up all this as well. But the reality hits once again when you get out in the real world and you're not able to pay you know, these deferments are over, you're not able to pay, or you do have a low paying job, and the money's not coming in to make these payments. So your credit gets wrecked, you know, maybe within a few years you meet someone, you end up having kids, and you have kids, and your credit's wrecked, and you're falling behind, and this affects your credit score, which is what you don't want. Because the student loans can make, it, make or break you. For those of you who don't have credit, your student loans is all that you have to make up your credit portfolio, which is something you need to keep in mind. I, I mentioned this in a lot of other videos, too, that many women use this, this, uh, this degree process or the fact that they are educated with a degree as a starting gauge or bar for dating men or prospective men. But as I said, this doesn't equal intelligence or drive, nor does it equal the ability for a man to effectively generate income or provide for you as a husband and a man or to provide for your kids. There's many men who don't have college degrees, but they have trades and they successfully own their own businesses and generate income. But you have some women who are taught or, you know, think that, well, since I have this degree... This man must have a degree or he won't have the time of day. But at the end of the day, you may not be looking at the big picture that you're not even an asset at the end of the day. You're a liability because if you're looking for a mate, especially a man who's business savvy and, you know, who's about building what other than your looks, maybe <laughs> what is he gaining, especially when, when I'm getting at this by this by uh, dating seriously or taking a woman seriously that is at the point where she is defaulting on loans she's she has maybe 150 maybe less 100, 100 to $150,000 in uh, student loans and he's supposed to be looking at marrying this, this woman and I see this a lot with couples uh, trying to get married or wanting to get married 
or you know trying to trying to get to this point maybe but we find out that one of them one of their credit is wrecked because of uh student loans but they're trying to pursue this avenue of getting married but they're unable to pay the student loans you know a man for even for a man to do that it would be reckless you know but you can't choose who anybody maybe he's willing to accept that but that's it's kind of weird that you know some women not weird but that this is a dating criteria for some women even though they're racked up on this high amount of debt and they they may not even be able to pay for it they keep getting deferments and things of that nature and the job that they currently have is not you know it's not really a a, a good return on investment for what they pay for for education this it can be seen as a means of independence and being self-sufficient due to due to uh you know these a lot of women with their education them being educated but at the end of the day they're still beset with debt swamped down with debt so if you're looking at dating and marriage it can be looked at you know especially from a man's point of view who actually cares about building you know from that point of view as excessive baggage and any business oriented or you know savvy man or potential husband would consider this you know just my thoughts so i just say young and old if you're looking into you know a field look into something that's practical that has a, a a high yield and return on investment for the amount of money that you invest into it you know just food for thought you know that's all i have to say about that <clears throat> let me know y'all comments make sure y'all comment on the video I'd like to hear you thought your thoughts on it make sure you like the video it's free it doesn't cost you anything you know share the video subscribe if you haven't click the bell that way you get all the notifications check me out on social media links is in the description amazon check me out on there with my books uh if you're feeling generous throw a couple coins in the well of wisdom as well you know i'm accepting donations i'm trying to you know expand this i'm trying to come with the t-shirts and all that good stuff here sooner or later and um that's all i really got for you guys you know just remember anything lost can be found again except for time wasted uh and uh look out for my other videos and um tomorrow i should be on with uh o'shea on o'shea vlogcast we go it's gonna be a good show so y'all make sure y'all check that out as well and um i'll see y'all then peace